So full disclosure, I am a Berkshire Hathaway shareholder, so this video might be a bit biased, but I only own like 10 shares of the Class B stock. So if you guys know, Class A stock is one of the most highly prized, uh, like sticker price stock in the world. And I think one share trades like $270,000 or something crazy like that. So I can't even afford one share of Class A. But even as a shareholder of Class B, that entitles me to this uh, cool new thing as you can see on my desk this is uh, they sent me this as a shareholder as part of my invitation to the shareholder meeting now unfortunately I can't go to the meeting because it's in Omaha Nebraska uh, I think on like May 15th or something and uh, we're on lockdown otherwise I would, totally would have gone but they sent me this annual report and as you can see it's a little booklet it's very cool and along with the package it came with a little voting card and yeah I can just vote for whatever proposals that the board uh, proposes and to be honest I have no idea what any of the proposals are because I don't have time to just read them and it's only 10 shares anyway so I just voted for whatever the board recommended man I feel like such a sheep but anyways let's get on with the video <music> So as some of you can see, the setup is a little different today. I'm just sitting in the exact same spot as I did last time, but I moved around some things and that's because I got this huge monitor. I'm living the ultra wide life now. And yeah, I just switched up some things and hopefully this angle looks better and I'm more in the middle of the frame as opposed to being on the side. So let me know if you guys like this new setup or if I need to switch around some things a little bit more. By the way, if you're wondering why I have an Icelandic flag up there, it's because back in 2018 during the World Cup, uh, I had to adopt a team because as some of you guys know, I'm from Canada and my parents are from China and the two teams that I have stakes in, which are Canada and China, are never in the World Cup. So somebody like me, I'm forced to adopt a team and I just chose Iceland just because I think they're the underdog, right? So Iceland is a country with like less than, I don't know, 200,000 people and they managed to find a world-class soccer team that's like actually pretty good. I just really like cheering for the underdog so that's why I bought this flag just to cheer on Iceland and then after the World Cup was over was like oh where did I put this flag so I just decided to hang up in my room and as some of you know also I went to Iceland back in November of 2018 I think it was and yeah it was beautiful so you guys definitely need to go to Iceland once this is all over so uh, yeah Iceland's a beautiful place make sure you visit it anyways I'm sure that's not what you guys subscribe for so I'm gonna move on right ahead with the video so today we're talking about Warren Buffett's company which is Berkshire Hathaway so if you don't know what Berkshire Hathaway is it's basically a holding companies for all the stocks and uh, brands that Warren Buffett owns. So for example, Warren Buffett wholly owns brands like Geico, Duracell, and Dairy Queen. Uh, just some of the brands I'm sure you guys are familiar with and possibly love even. Uh, but what you might not know is that Warren Buffett also has significant stakes in famous companies like Apple and Goldman Sachs and Coca-Cola. So if you're buying into Berkshire Hathaway stock, it's like you're buying a portfolio of all of these stocks together. So you have all these brands that are 100% owned and you have some companies that uh, Warren Buffett has significant stakes in. Now the reason why this is interesting is because Warren Buffett's company Berkshire Hathaway kind of mimics the behavior of an index fund but I think that it's probably a better index fund. Uh, so if you recall what an index fund is, remember how an index fund is just a basket of stocks, right? So for example, there's index funds that are based off of the S&P 500, which are 500 of the biggest US companies. So if you buy into a S&P 500 fund, like ticker symbol SPY, uh, it's called the SPY index fund, or some people call it the spider because that's the uh, company that makes it. Or you can buy into Vanguard's VOO, which is also an S&P 500 index fund. If you buy into that, you're getting a little piece of pretty much every company that's in the S&P 500. But if you buy into Berkshire Hathaway stock, you're not buying a little piece of every company in the S&P 500, right? You're just buying stocks that Warren Buffett has picked. Now, the advantage of that is that if you trust Warren Buffett and you trust his investment strategy, it's kind of like he's picking stocks for you. So if you entrust your money to Berkshire Hathaway, it's kind of like you're just letting Warren Buffett manage your money somewhat. So Berkshire Hathaway's holdings is also pretty diversified. I'll put up a picture right here of what 
uh, the companies that Warren Buffett owns, and you can take a look at all the different sectors and all the different brands that they're in. All these companies compete in very different industries, so you're kind of diversifying your money in a similar way that you would with an index fund when you buy into uh, Berkshire Hathaway stock. And the reason why I think Berkshire Hathaway stock is interesting is also something called the index fund bubble. So this is something you might have come across a bit if you do a lot of financial research or if you've been following a famous person called Michael Burry. So if that name sounds familiar, he was one of the main characters in the movie, The Big Short. And uh, Michael Burry is still an active investor to this day, and he made a lot of money uh, betting against the market in 2008 uh, because he figured out that the subprime mortgage crisis was going to happen. So he realized that a lot of these packaged uh, was called CDOs, collateralized debt obligations. So all these CDOs, which are investments that have a lot of mortgages that's bundled in them, he realized that a lot of these bundled mortgages within the CDOs were what's called subprime mortgages. Uh, so what a subprime mortgage is, is basically uh, a mortgage that's really highly likely to default. So these mortgages were probably taken out by people who didn't have enough income to actually be able to support the interest payments on the debt that they owed. So they probably took out too much money and they couldn't afford to pay it back. And as a result, uh, there's a high likelihood of them not being able to pay their mortgage, which means that a lot of these subprime mortgages in the CDOs were gonna go bust. And that just takes out the entire mortgage sector, right? So so that's exactly what happened in 2008, where all these subprime mortgages and people couldn't afford to pay their mortgage, all these subprime mortgages defaulted, and then that caused the whole recession back in 2008, 2009. Yeah, so Michael Burry was one of the people that figured this out. And Michael Burry is now saying that the next big bubble is going to be what's called the index fund bubble. So to explain this simply, uh, what it means is that when people rush in to buy index fund just because they want to diversify it, so they rush in and they just spend all their money into these index fund. Uh, but the problem is that the index fund contain a lot of companies that are good and bad. So all the bad companies that are within the index, they get propped up, right? Because people are flooding money into these index fund uh, and a lot of these money ends up in the hands of people who badly manage the companies. So all these bad companies who, you know, take on a ton of debt, don't have that much cash flow, have horrible balance sheet, they get propped up just because people flood money into an index fund blindly. Uh, so maybe that's a potential reason why the whole index fund game these days is just a giant bubble. And once the bubble bursts and people realize, oh no, all these companies that I put my money into, into these index funds, they're actually really bad companies. And eventually some of them will default regardless. And then that will take down the entire index. So that's sort of the idea that Michael Burry is coming at. So uh, yeah, there's a risk involved in index fund too. Just don't just think that index funds are risk-free just because, oh, the money's diversified, the money's diversified. Well, yeah, it is diversified, but uh, again, a lot of you're buying a lot of bad companies when you throw a lot of money into these index fund blindly. So what I'm getting at here is uh, you don't have that problem with Berkshire Hathaway, right? Or at least you're, it's not going to be as bad as just blindly throwing your money into an index fund because after all, uh, Warren Buffett and his team and his team of directors and all the executives at Berkshire, they've been doing this for decades and clearly they know what they're doing because they've been doing pretty well. So the advantage is that you have that team behind you when you just buy Berkshire Hathaway instead of buying into SPY. Now the next thing I want to note is just that I know a lot of people criticize Warren Buffett for keeping a lot of cash and not paying any dividends. So if you know anything about Warren Buffett's investment strategy, he loves to invest in dividend paying stocks. So Coca-Cola is a prime example, right? So uh, the money that he put in Coca-Cola, he'll get back every year as dividends. Like, so his initial investment is covered by just one year of dividends. Uh, and he's making a ton of money just from the dividends. And he says that Coca-Cola is one of those stocks that he will never sell just because the dividend is so good. But if you come back to it and you look at Berkshire Hathaway, you would see that they actually don't pay out any dividends. So you go, what the heck? So Warren Buffett would buy companies that pay out a lot of dividends, but he doesn't give any himself. Well, the reason is that he prefers to keep a lot of cash so that he can buy stocks on the cheap in the event of a market crash. So famously, according to the latest report, on the 
latest balance sheet, Berkshire actually has $128 billion in cash. Now, I don't have to tell you how much cash that is because you guys know how much cash that is, right? That's a lot of cash. So yeah, Warren Buffett's strategy is just to sit on a lot of cash and wait for a market crash and wait for opportunities to present themselves. And if you want to know how good that, that strategy has worked, well, lately we've been having sort of a market crash, although the market has rallied back up quite a bit since the bottom back in late March, it's still down quite a bit uh, compared to its all-time highs back in, uh, I think, early February or late January. Uh, so Buffett's strategy is basically like when there's a recession, when there's a market crash, it's kind of like it's raining gold outside. And if you have a lot of cash, it's like you're taking a bathtub and you're going to collect the gold. And if you don't have any money during a market crash, then you can't buy any stocks on the cheap, right? It's kind of like you're trying to collect gold with a thimble, as he put it. So a thimble is like one of those things that you put on your finger when you're suing, in case you guys didn't know what that was. It's one of the pieces in Monopoly. But anyways, it's like if, if there's a recession and there's a market crash and you don't have any cash, it's kind of like you're trying to collect gold with a little thimble, right? So that's not gonna work. And it appears that he is right in this case because now, uh, since the market has gone down so much, he has the opportunity to be deploying all these assets. And you can bet he's buying stocks, probably right now, or maybe he's waiting for an even bigger crash, who knows? But uh, you can bet that whenever the market dips significantly, he'll be buying more stocks. So yeah, I think overall, I really like this strategy and I like the idea. And I think Berkshire is one of those stocks where you can buy and you can just keep forever. So you can just buy and you never sell. And yeah, I know Warren Buffett's old and you know some people might be concerned about his health let's face it I don't want to be morbid I don't want to be pessimistic here I think Warren Buffett is really healthy for his age but you know he's getting kind of old so a lot of people are thinking you know what's going to happen after Warren Buffett right but I think that at this point, the company is well managed and well run enough. It's not just Buffett himself, right? So um, he can pass the torch to other people that he's been bringing up, uh, even long term, even after Warren Buffett. Berkshire Hathaway will be fine. It'll long outlive him. So yeah, that's why I'm a shareholder of Berkshire Hathaway. And even during a market crash, I know I'm down quite a bit from when I bought it because I bought it back when the stock was like 220-ish. So uh, it's down quite significantly from that point, but I'm not really worried. And that's one stock that I'll just hold forever and never sell. And it's gonna be probably an integral part, a foundational part of my portfolio going forward. So add this stock to your watch list if you haven't already. So I promise to keep these videos short and sweet, so I'll leave it here for now. Be sure to hit the like button if you haven't already and consider subscribing if you haven't. Be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I'll leave the links down below in the description as always. Oh, with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.